guys welcome back in the last lecture i discussed when to suspect leukocyte adhesion defect in this lecture i will be starting with the leukocyte adhesion deficiencies first i will give a brief introduction to the three types of leds and then we'll go to the leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 1 which i'll be mainly covering in this lecture but before starting with LED, let us first revise the process of leukocyte adhesion and migration. The circulating leukocytes, when they reach the area of inflammation through the bloodstream, they engage certain adhesion molecules in order to slow down. This step is called as tethering. Okay? And this step of tethering is mediated by molecules known as selectins. So these are mediated by molecules known as selectins. The E or the P selectins on the endothelium, they bind to adhesion molecules that are present on the leukocytes, which are silomucin, silomucin-like glycoproteins of the Sile lewis type. The most important silomucin like glycoprotein is PSGL1, which is short of P selecting glycoprotein ligand 1. PSGL1 is short of P selecting glycoprotein ligand 1. In this diagram, the green pentagon on the leukocytes is the PSGL1. The adhesion bonds between the selectin and the PSGL1, they dissociate and associate again and again, build up over and over again, resulting in the slow rolling motion. They result in the slow rolling motion. So this is the rolling motion that occurs on the endothelium by the association and dissociation again and again of the selectins and the glycoprotein ligands like PSGL1. In addition to the selectin and selectin ligand bonds, the inactive integrins also help in the rolling motion. Okay, however, the adhesion bonds between, between selectins and PSGL1 as well as the inactive integrin mediated bonds, they are not sufficient to permanently arrest the cells on the endothelial cells. The endothelial cells, they thereby secrete chemokines or these are the cytokines that bind to specific chemokine receptors which in, in turn lead to the activation of integrins. This important step is called as inside-out signaling. Inside-out signaling. So in inside-out signaling, uh, the activation of integrins take place in which they undergo a conformational change from a low affinity to a high affinity molecule. They become straight. The integrins become straight and become high affinity molecules. The chemokines that are secreted by the endothelial cells, they act on the uh, chemokine receptors and in turn activate the integrins and thereby lead to their conformational change from low affinity to high affinity a step known as inside out signaling. As seen here on the right diagram, the integrin named LFA1. LFA1 is leukocyte function associated antigen 1 with a CD factor CD11A, CD18 of leukocytes is activated by the chemokine and undergoes a conformational change to a high affinity state. This high affinity molecule offered after the rapid activation binds several adhesion molecules that belong to the immunoglobulin superfamily such as ICAM1, ICAM2, VCAM1, etc. This provides a tighter bond out the, of the leukocytes uh, which finally arrest on the endothelium and migrate through the endothelium. So these were the steps of leukocyte adhesion and migration. Now that we have revised them. Let's start with the primary immunodeficiency disorder, leukocyte adhesion defect, in which the main defect lies in leukocyte adhesion.
In this disorder, the leukocytes, they cannot migrate to the infection sites to kill the invading microorganisms. There are three different types of leukocyte adhesion defect, type 1, type 2, and type 3. Type 1 is in which there are mutations in the CD18 molecule, that is the CD18 gene, resulting in defective or deficient beta-2 integrins. The beta-2 integrins are deficient, which leads to defect in the adhesion of the leukocytes to the endothelium. This results from a mutation in the gene ITGP2 gene, which encodes the beta-2 integrin family. Second type is the type 2 leukocyte adhesion defect or deficiency in which there is absence of the Psi Lewis X leading to deficiency of the glycoproteins uh, which are psilomucin like glycoproteins like PSGL1 which is defective in LAD2. So uh, psilomucin like glycoproteins are deficient in LAD2 Two, leading to the defect in the rolling. So selectins like uh, the P-selectin or the E-selectin, when they bind with selectin ligands like PS, PSGL1, they lead to the rolling motion. So in LAD2, because of a deficient PSGL1, results in defective rolling. Third type is the type 3 LAD in which there is defect in the integrin activation cascade specifically caused by mutation in Kindlin 3 and other genes which we'll be discussing later on. So in short, in LAD1, the defect lies in the beta-2 integrin leading to the defect in the adhesion of the uh, leukocytes to the endothelium. In LAD2, th there is absence of selectin ligand like PSGL. PSGL1 is deficient leading to the defect in the rolling motion. In LAD3, the, there is defect in beta 1, 2, and 3 integrins leading to defect of beta integrin activation. Now that we have discussed the three types of LAD in short, we'll start with the details of the three types. Uh, starting with leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 1. It is the most common type of LAD. It affects 1 in 1 million people annually. And a defect here lies in the CD18. The CD18, that is the beta subunit of the integrins, uh, is defective due to mutation in the ITGB2 gene which encodes the beta 2 integrin family so beta 2 integrins that is cd11 cd18 molecules are either defective or they are not formed so this is the cd11 cd18 group that is not formed which includes lfa1 MAC one CR4 leukointegrins. These are the CD11, CD18 families which are uh, not formed or are defective due to mutation in the CD18 molecule out of that. This affects steady adhesion of the leukocyte to the endothelial surfaces and then aff this affects their migration. Now what are the clinical hallmarks of LED type 1? The patient is typically a neonate or an infant who presents with delayed separation of the umbilical cord. A normal separation of the umbilical cord is observed usually within three days to maximum of 45 days after birth with a mean of approximately 10 days. So within 10 days, usually the umbilical cord will separate. A maximum of 45 days, uh, normal separation can occur. But there is, if there is no separation of the umbilical cord by 45 days, it points toward a delayed separation of the umbilical cord, which is a common finding in LED type 1. Also, in LED 1, there is presence of recurrent bacterial or fungal infections, primarily that of the skin and the mucous membranes. But characteristically, there is no pus formation. The infections, they are mainly caused by either Staph aureus or Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Typically, as I told you, there is no pus formation uh, 
mainly because there is almost complete absence of neutrophil invasion. In LED1 also characteristic feature is the wound healing. It is delayed. There is impaired wound healing. Impaired healing of infections, traumatic or surgical wounds is also characteristic. Scars, they tend to acquire a dystrophic cigarette paper appearance. As seen here, the scars, they acquire a dystrophic cigarette paper appearance uh, of the wounds on the knees. Also, they can occur periodontitis, mainly later in life. A persistent marked neutrophilia, that is increased neutrophil count in the blood, is associated with recurrent infections, mainly in the newborn period or early infancy. And if a persistent marked neutrophilia in newborn period or early infancy is present, that should prompt a suspicion of LAD1 disorder. But profoundly impaired neutrophil mobilization to the tissue inflammatory sites and thus the tissue sites, they are typically devoid of any neutrophils. That is the tissue neutropenia occurs. So characteristically, although the blood neutrophil count is really high, the tissues, they hardly get any uh, neutrophils because of the lack of migration of neutrophils to the inflammatory sites. Thus, on the, in the tissue area, there is neutropenia or lack of neutrophils in the tissues. So these were the clinical hallmarks of LAD1. Now let us discuss its lab diagnosis. Flow cytometric analysis is the definitive diagnosis for uh, the leukocyte adhesion defect type 1. It demonstrates the absence of a functional CD18 molecule along with a possible decrease in the associated alpha subunit molecules that is CD11 on the surface of leukocytes. To define the exact molecular defect in the beta 2 subunit, the testing for ITGB2 gene is done. So the gold standard for diagnosis is flow cytometry showing a defect in CD18 molecules that is the functional CD18 molecules are either deficient or are defective uh, on the surface of leukocytes with additional defect or decrease seen in the CD18, uh, CD11 molecules. And exact molecular diagnosis is done by gene sequencing with a mutation found in the ITGB2 gene, which is responsible for formation of the beta 2 integrin family. Next, coming to the management, it includes the aggressive treatment of the infections that are recurrent. Patients, as you know, are infected with common pathogenic agents and not with opportunistic ones. And therefore, they usually respond well to the antimicrobial therapy. The most common pathogens I've told you are the Staph aureus, our Pseudomonas aeruginosa, our uh, Klebsiella, and Proteus, etc. Early aggressive treatment uh, can be in the form of prophylactic antibiotic therapy, especially before procedures like dental procedures. Prophylactic antibiotics with or without antifungal agents should therefore be considered to prevent infections from occurring in patients with LAD1. Patients, they can receive routine vaccinations uh, as a normal patient. We can uh, be careful about the oral hygiene of such patients because dental infections or periodontitis is common in these patients. Uh, the only successful treatment of severe LAD is the allogenic uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplant. So a severe case will be fatal by the age of two years if a hematopoietic stem cell transplant is not done. Among other treatments, recombinant human interferon gamma treatment has also been used in LED1. In an article published in the European Journal of Pediatrics, it showed a successful treatment of severe leukocyte adhesion deficiency using recombinant human interferon gamma. Among other treatments, a case report published in New England Journal of Medicine, it stated 
the presence of a dominant interleukin 23 and interleukin 12 signature at inflamed sites in humans with LAD1. It was uh, also present in mouse models of the same disorder. So, increase in interleukin 12 and interleukin 23 present at the sites of inflammation and blockage of this pathway in mouse models resulted in the resolution of the immunopathologic condition. So inhibition of interleukin 23 and interleukin 7 and interleukin 12, it may have a role in the management of LAD1. Ustekinumab, it is a monoclonal antibody that is directed against the P40 subunit which is common to interleukin 12 and interleukin 23. And it has already been used in psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. This monoclonal antibody, which is directed against interleukin 12 and 23 through its P40 subunit, it was used successfully to treat refractory periodontitis and sacral ulcer in a patient of LAD1 as reported by Musopoulos et al. These are the pictures on the left side of the patient with LAD1 having periodontitis and sacral wound. These are the pictures 14 months after treatment with ustekinumab. The gingival tissues uh, and the sacral wound 14 months after treatment showed marked improvement. However, this is single such case report. Further studies are necessary to determine the safety and efficacy of ustekinumab in the treatment of inflammation in L and infections in LAD1. So with this, we come to the end of the lecture on leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 1. In the next video, we will be discussing LAD type 2, which is also a very important topic from exam point of view. Hope you all like the lecture. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. If you like my videos and want to get regular updates for the newly uploaded videos in medicine, kindly hit the bell icon.